Hello, I'm Chris Patterson, and this is Stockwatch on Wednesday, the 12th of June, 2024. All information is general advice and may not be suitable for you. Always consult your advisor before making any investments. All questions from viewers should be sent to stockwatch at fnn.com.au. Here are a few of my market observations today. First off, U.S. non-farm payroll was up 272,000, which was a lot more than expected. This was last Friday. What this means is there's no need for a rush to cut interest rates until inflation is lower. See, if the economy is going strong, why lower rates? You don't want to prime the pump even further. The market is high by many measures, however. It does not mean you should sell. Just be careful. When markets are high, it means the probability of a decline is getting higher, but we can't predict when, and the market still can go much higher from here. Here's an interesting statistic I wanted to share with you. This is the EU growth rate surprises. So we've heard over the past 10 years what a disaster Greece is, and Italy's been doing poor in the past, and then Spain and Portugal, all, all these warm weather countries, well, surprise. Greece, Portugal, Spain are leading the EU in countries performing well with GDP growth. You know, I am never overly surprised when I see things like this. Here's the Aussie economic growth story. This is a little disheartening. As you can see that we're going to the right, to the present. GDP growth is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, we're only growing like 1.1% on an annual basis, according to the RBA and the Bureau of Statistics. However, this is real economic growth. It is not nominal growth. There's a huge difference, and I would love to spend a lot of time explaining, but I'll be short. Real growth is GDP growth minus inflation rate. So if nominal growth is 5%, inflation is 3.5%, then real growth is 1.5%. Now, when you go buy a car or you go to the supermarket or corporate profits, that's really off of nominal growth because car manufacturers don't say, well, our car prices are only up 1.5% this year on a real inflation-adjusted basis. No, car prices are up 5% this year. So be careful about real GDP growth. That is not the full story where money is flowing in the U.S. market. Now, I do this because it's fascinating, and this is starting to happen in the Australian market, but we're pretty far behind. This is actively managed funds and exchange-traded funds. See, exchange-traded funds and regular mutual funds, or what we call managed funds, they're about equal in size now. Here in Australia, managed funds are still a lot more than ETFs, but the growth rate with ETFs is significantly higher. So we too will get to this inflection point, maybe around 2030 or so. How Australians invest. This is a few years old, but I wanted to share it because it's fascinating. Residential real estate, the value is 1.8 trillion. Superannuation assets, 3.1 trillion. So obviously these values are higher now, but it's the relativity that counts. The value of all listed shares, $2.8 trillion. Total of commercial real estate is only $1 trillion. So a trillion is a lot of money because you look at all these big high-rises in downtown Sydney and Melbourne and Perth, etc. All of this commercial real estate adds up to $1 trillion. I would have figured it would be more. The number of dwellings is only $6 million. So we need to build a lot more dwellings, which are houses, or apartments, what have you. This is amazing, the amount real estate is in terms of superannuation assets and listed shares. Here's another chart worth looking at. This is U.S. again, and I title it, this is not debt to GDP that counts. The reason is a few weeks ago, I had a chart and it showed that on a debt to GDP basis, the United States is getting better than they were in 2020. 2021 to now, debt to GDP is getting lower, and that's primarily because the debt is going up, but GDP is going up faster, if that makes sense. However, 
The real problem, which I identified then, and this chart shows it perfectly, is at some point in time, even though debt to GDP ratio is getting better, the overall total amount of debt and the interest owed on that is going to overwhelm the federal treasury. This chart shows what's happening, is the amount of interest on the total debt outstanding is getting very high and it's going to really crimp the U.S. government's ability to spend on other things. They have massive expenditure in military, a lot of other areas. Interest debt is getting to be one of them. Here, this is fascinating because we all hear about the Magnificent Seven in America. These tech stocks, or really artificial intelligence chip manufacturers. NVIDIA is the big one. Well, you take a look on the left-hand side is Cisco. And they made a product that they had manufacturing supremacy. And then we see what happened when other manufacturers started filling that void that only Cisco was providing. Cisco price went down. The right is NVIDIA. They dominate chips that are needed for artificial intelligence purposes. Obviously, in a supply and demand economy, free markets, other companies are going to rush to get in on that and build these chips, which means the need for NVIDIA will diminish. They'll still be a market leader, but they won't be as big of a price giver as they are now. So I'm afraid NVIDIA might be getting at a point where it might follow Cisco and go back down. We don't know when. This chart, though, shows that high-flying companies always have a pullback. Now, this is don't let politics stop you from investing. What I'm saying here is this is the polls of the Liberal Party, Coalition, and the Labor Party. Right now, they're very close. So will the next election Liberals win or Labor win? I don't know. I don't want to spend time trying to guess on it. What I do know is from an investment perspective, share market perspective, it probably doesn't have a big impact on long-term performance of your investing assets. Three companies I want to cover today. First one is Viva Leisure. Code on the ASX is VVA. It's trading around $1.50. This is a company with a sordid past, but they've gotten their act together, as you can see. A very volatile, troughed, bottomed, and has now been slowly working its way up the past year or so. What is the valuation on it? These are Citibank estimates, by the way. Now, this company only has a market cap of $139 million, so it's going to be very difficult to invest a huge amount into it. And by the way, on a small cap, I would never recommend that you buy a large chunk in a small cap company because of illiquidity getting in and illiquidity getting out. Citibank has a price target of $3. I think that's a bit rich because with small companies, you never really can predict the future. But we can look at the current numbers. Revenue growth rate 2023 to 2026 is estimated 14% per annum. This is very good. Earnings growth in that period is 27% per annum. And the dividend growth, well, they don't pay a dividend. That's fine. It's a growth stock. So I looked at the book value shareholder equity growth rate in this period, and it's around 12% per annum. That's good. That means buying this, you're going to be getting like three times what you could get with overnight money. Here is more numbers. The ratio, looking at the PE on 2025 earnings estimate of 15.2 cents, it's only trading at 10 times. That's pretty cheap. In fact, it's very cheap based on these growth estimates by Citibank. The yield, no dividend, so skip it. Free cash flow, it's only around 2%, but that's not until 2026. Until then, it's got negative cash flow. So that's a black mark. The peg ratio is very, very low at 0.37. That is very, very bullish. It was founded in 2004. Now, Viva Leisure operates health clubs, gyms. It has a troubled past. In the Gold Coast, it used to own one of these amusement parks, 
and somebody died on one of the rides. And there was lawsuits for a long time. It was a mess. However, that's in their past. They're focusing on health care, well, health clubs and gyms. So because of Citibank's positive view on it, but with the sorted pass, I would normally rate it a full buy, but I'd only take a half stake now, see how it performs, maybe increase if it continues to improve. Second company is Sky City Entertainment. It's located in New Zealand, but it operates here in Australia also. These are all New Zealand dollars, and the price is trading about $1.54. Looking at this chart, you'd say, why would anybody touch this company? Well, that's a good question. Let's look at the numbers again. These are Citibank estimates. There's a market cap of $1.2 billion New Zealand dollars. 12-month price target, Citi has $1.40, but that's down from $1.80 recently. Revenue growth rate in each of the next three years is uh, negative 1.5%. That's not very good. Earnings growth, negative 16%. That's even worse. Dividend, well, they're not paying a dividend. So I don't see negative revenue, negative earnings, no dividend. Well, let's look at the PE at least. The earnings for 2025 is estimated 11.3 cents. That's 14 times. Uh, I, the company that's not making earnings, not even growing their revenue, I don't see why you would buy it. The yield on a 5.3 cent dividend in 2024, I'm using 2024 because in 25 and 26, they're not paying a dividend. It's 3.4% yield this year, but so what? Free cash flow around 5%, that's okay. It operates casinos in New Zealand, Australia, and Adelaide is where their casino is located. They're cutting the dividend to zero. I'm neutral because I happen to like the business model of casinos, but they're just under so much threat by regulators these days. I'm not saying regulators are bad. You don't want to have bad operators in that sector. But nonetheless, I would avoid Star City. I would avoid Sky City until there's some positive news. Right now, there's no reason to touch the company. Life 36 Incorporated. It's a U.S. company, by the way. The code on the ASX is 360. That's kind of unique. It's easy to remember. It's trading around $13.55. You notice on the right that it has spiked up dramatically recently. These estimates are from Bell Potter. There's a market cap of $2.9 billion. Price target is recently $17, down from $17.75. I'm putting this on now because it's a very important aspect to investing. When brokers are raising price targets or raising earnings estimates, that is good. When brokers start to lower price targets, lower earnings estimates, that is bad. They might still rate a company a buy, but if they're lowering estimates, that means you've got to start being careful with this company. If you own it, maybe you consider lightening up. Just watch it a little bit more than you would normally do so. The revenue growth from 2023 to 2026 is 19% per annum. That's very good. The earnings growth is 39% per annum. That's off a low base, so that's kind of deceptive. The dividend growth, well, they don't pay a dividend. That's fine. The equity growth from 2023 to 2026 is 19% per annum. So this company is doing very well. On a PE basis, 2025 earnings estimate is around 40 cents. What I've really done is I've taken the 2025 estimate and the 26 estimate and took the midpoint. That's because where we are in the year and end of year, you want to go a little bit like 12 months or 18 months out. Based on that, it's a 34 times PE multiple. The yield with no dividend is zero. Gross margin, well, it's 74%. That's pretty high. But cost to income ratio is high, it's 75%. Uh, it's a lot of expenses. Provides an app for families. It's based in San Francisco. It is global in reach. The tax rate right now is zero, and that's from tax loss carry forwards. That's a little bit of a worry because they're actually getting 
a refund of some previously paid taxes. I'm not so sure about this company. I'd be happier if it was here in Australia. It's an app. I'm not really big in technology and apps. So I rate it neutral simply because it's something I don't really understand completely. If you understand apps, take a look at them. You might feel that it's a buy based upon its growth numbers. As always, if you want to learn more about anything I covered, send an email request to stockwatch at fnn.com.au and direct all questions to me, Chris Pedersen. Have a wonderful week, and I hope you're profitable. Thank you.